soon as the beat drops, every kid in the club jumps up. I promise you the roof lifts off the club. <laughs> the roof lifts off the club. Literally the most magical music moment I've ever seen in my entire life. So I'm now on the road managing the shop boys. So we have a show in Macon, Georgia, never forget. It's this club called Club Rendezvous. So I'm about to leave, go back and get the group. And this uh, young college girl taps me on my show. She's like, where are you going? I'm like, I'm about to go get the shop boys. I'm about to do what we need to do and, you know, you know, make y'all make sure y'all have a good time. She was like, no, 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 no. It's about to happen. So what are you talking about? It's about to happen. She was like, it's about to happen. I said, okay. One of the better decisions I made in my life. Listening to an 18-year-old college girl. <laughs> it's about to happen, whatever that means, right? Them horns come on. I see, literally, the club has no floor. It's like literally a dirt hole in the wall club. It's not even in Macon. It's like a small town outside of Macon. Like, when you Google the club, you'll see how small the town is. So, the ceiling you can touch. So, I hear the... And I just see, like, 800 college kids. Now it looks like a 1,000 college kids. Right? And then that K on the track drops. And then the beat. Him not. I'm on him not. And then you just see, as soon as the beat drops, every kid in the club jumps up. I promise you the roof lifts off the club. <laughs> the roof lifts off the club. Literally the most magical music moment I've ever seen in my entire life. The funny part about it was, it was three guys on the stage performing the record. So I go get their number and I'm geeking them hype. And I'm like, at that moment, I'm like, I don't know what a music executive is. I don't even know what a manager is. But whatever it is, I'm going to be a part of this shit. And I'm going to make sure that everybody in the world sees what I just saw. One thing I, I, will, I will say about Michael and V and Mook, those are the group members, FLY, um, and uh, uh, Jit Lee, who's the first, who's at the first verse, he's featured on the song. Um, what I will say about them, they were crafty. Like, they were marketing and promoting the record. So if they weren't at a show... It was because they were in Stone Mountain, which is where they're from, and they were breaking it on the, on the east side, mm -hmm. you know, which a lot of records at that time didn't come from that side. Not, not Stone Mountain. A few records came from the east side, Lil John and the east side boys. Yeah. Da, 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 da. But it wasn't like they were known. Like, most of the rappers in Atlanta were known from coming from the west side. You know, your T.I.s, your Young Droves, your Shawty Lowe's, your Shot Boys, uh, uh, franchise boys. During that day, the DJ was like IG. Like you would go to the DJ and be like, yo, whose record yeah, is that? And then they would give you the person's number. So because I was connected with all the DJs, they would give me, they would give them, they would give yeah, no, label yeah. people's my number. You don't really know that it's one decision that can change everything for you, especially when you in your early 20s, right? Um, and so it was a guy that would come up every night, every other night, every other Monday and be like, yo, man, I'm going to take you. So I'm going to take you to me. L.A. Like, really. You ever look back and say, I've worked with some of the greatest artists ever in history because I didn't realize your connection with people like, you know, Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, yeah. Bobby Brown, Michael Jackson, yeah. just everybody. I knew more about Babyface than I did L.A. because yeah. my parents, you know, and my sister, they listen to that kind of music. So I'm hearing them, but I'm not hearing them. So every week he's going, I'm going to take you to me L.A. Reed, man. I'm going to fly to New York. I'm going to take you to me L.A. Reed. T.A.'s like, look, man. He not going to reschedule that meet. And then I'm looking at this black Lincoln Town car. And I'm like, yo, this is my future. I jump in that car. Don't have a bag. Don't barely even have a coat. Land in New York. 1245. It's snowing. So all this is happening. We get... To LA's office, corner office, most beautiful. I mean, you've never seen an office this gorgeous. He opens up these doors, it's like you're in heaven. All you hear is, 
I promise you, angels are singing. <laughs> I promise you, it's a it's a halo above his head. I mean, it's just like literally, his office looks like hell. Uh, anybody that knows the office on Worldwide Plaza knows I'm not exaggerating. And literally, he opens up the doors and then he just gives me like the biggest dap. What's up? Da -da 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 -da. This this is a true story. So I wasn't really prepared, but I was prepared. Thank God for the mix CD. So. The record comes on, them horns, them infectious, them infectious horns, the crack rock of horns. <laughs> David Massey is the guy that is talking funny. He's just coming in from London. L.A. hires him at the time to run Island. He's getting hired on this day. So the, ba the, 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 the horns come on, then hypnotic, exact. Boom! David Massey stands up on his stands up on the chair. Massive jam, massive jam. <laughs> L.A. puts on his shades. He pulls out a pen and a pencil because he's a drummer by trade. He's drumming. He's going crazy. Da -da 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 -da. I mean, it's nuts in there. It's only three of us. So I'm like, okay. So I stand up and I'm doing the dance and I'm like, <laughs> and it just becomes this moment. So the record goes on. And now granted, my man just throws me into the office. He's not even in there. So he was kind of like my comfort level. So I'm like, so LA is like, what was that? <laughs> like, tell me. LA's like, you gotta get the group here tomorrow. Finally, we get them, get them ready, get them dripped out, take them back to LA, one o'clock. I go into LA's office, he got his whole staff. The whole entire Death Jam stack. I'm like, holy smoke. Like, I don't know if they, you know what I mean? I'm like, we've only performed in front of, you know, college yeah. kids and shippers. Like, how's this going to work? So you got all the top executives, like guys that are still big time to this day. You know what I mean? Just in this room. So I literally go back. So LA was like, yeah, man, look. You know, they need to come in here and do that thing that you showed me on YouTube. Like, yeah. like they need to like that same thing. I'm like, all right. Easier said than done. So I go and tell the group, I'm like, look, the whole staff's in there. You go in there, you give them what I know you can give them, your whole life changes. They go in there, and they go crazy. I'm talking about nuts. And you know I'm on cause I'm swaying, swaying. I rush him up out of the office after they go in there and perform. L.A. calls me back in. He tells the staff, he says, what y'all think about that record? I don't give a fuck what y'all think about that record. We taking this record number one. And that was that. That was that. You know, it, it, in, 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 the, in the original life of the record, it went top 10. Um, it probably could have been a, a number one record. You know what I mean? But... It was such a cultural record yeah. that I think when it got oversaturated, the kids kind of start. All right, it's our record. That's why even to this day, if you go to a college homecoming, like it's that's the record they play to unite everybody. Yeah. They call it the Black College National Anthem. Like I don't care if you're a a, 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 a graduate of 1968 or 2022. That's the only way that everybody, they come together and they do their thing. And I think that's what made the record special is why it's having such this long lifespan. Here it is. Let me see. We did, we, we put the record out 2009. Record's about to be 14 years yeah. old. And it's bigger in perpetuity and it gets bigger each year in perpetuity. And then to see not just people that look like me, but Caucasians, Hispanics, Asians. Like, that's what I'm just like. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. This record might outlive me.